Hi, and welcome to Vent Resources Check-In. Thanks for joining us. We're going to spend the next 15 minutes doing a quick talk around resources for veterans and their families. I'm Matt Cassidy. I'm a chaplain with the VA. I'm also an Afghanistan veteran. I served in the 82nd Airborne Division. 2005, my unit did a quick deployment to Afghanistan to help uh, secure the elections that were ongoing at the time. I went back a little over a year later uh, with an aviation task force and was there from 2000, almost all of 2007 into the first part of 2008. So uh, I, I'm there with you as a veteran. I have served not only uh, in combat, out of combat, garrison, hospitals. And so I'm here today because I care about you. I care about your families, uh, your caregivers and your kids. So I just want to start you off with a quote here from Winston Churchill. Many of you know he was the, le the leader of Great Britain in World War II. He once said, nothing in life is so exhilarating as to be shot at without resolve. So first thing I want to do is I want to talk about what's going on right now. And we've titled today's um, little talk, Moral Injury and Spiritual Practices. And so what are, what are y'all feeling right now? especially folks that have come in uh, that post 9-11 that served in Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about what I'm feeling. So this is helpful for me as a veteran as well to help kind of talk about this and share with y'all. Uh, first thing I wanna let y'all know is it is okay to be mad about what's going on right now, uh, about what happened uh, as we drew down in Afghanistan, uh, the heartbreaking images that we saw on the news, uh, to look back at over you know 20 years of, of combat in Afghanistan, it's okay to be mad. I'd be surprised if 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 y'all aren't mad. That I think that's probably a, a pretty normal emotion. I have uh, long said that anger is an emotion. It seems to be the one that I'm most in touch with. But there are other emotions that we have as well, and we it's very helpful to be able to share those with others. I think one of the things that that I feel. Uh, that's right along with anger um, and, and being mad is just the disappointment that I, I hope that, you know, the service that that I gave, that, that my friends gave, um, people that I served with, that my family endured the sacrifice of, of having their dad gone for 18 months. My wife had to deal with me being gone for 18 months and being the, you know, the primary caregiver for our three children at the time. Um, there were a lot of sacrifices that happened. And, and I know there's a lot of feeling around that. And I want y'all to know that one, that's okay. If you're mad, if you're upset, if you're just frustrated as all get out. Um, yesterday, you know, I was watching the news and there was uh, a veteran that said, hey, you know what, my, my buddy died in 2011. Um, did he die? Did he die for nothing? Uh, I would like to, to let y'all know that your sacrifice was not for nothing. Uh, your, your friends did not die for nothing. My friends didn't die for anything. For 20 years, we gave the people of Afghanistan a glimpse of what life in a democratic and free country looked like. At some point, uh, that had to be taken on and, and primary ownership had to be taken by not only the Afghan people, but the Afghan government as well. Um, and so, uh, politicians in in both parties across i mean for from the last two decades have been a part of the decisions that have led to our withdrawal in afghanistan and so i get it there's probably a lot of a feeling of man i wish we would have done better and i think as we look back at um, or as we look at moral injury john shea who uh wrote a, a book called achilles uh, it, was a, it was a walk through um the achilles novelette, I guess, wrote a book on uh, veterans in Vietnam. He, he was when he first was working with veterans in the 80s and coined the term moral injury. And it was the betrayal of what's right by someone or something in a high stake situation. And so we have an idea of what's right. Uh, we have an idea of what needs to happen, what should happen. And there, there is a betrayal there, but I, I want to make sure that you know we're all looking at this, that it's not a betrayal of one person. It's not a betrayal of one political leader. Um, in some aspects, it's a betrayal of our ideals. And so I, I think some of the some of that hurt um, needs to squarely lay on the shoulders of of the politicians in Afghanistan. And. And I think that's completely fair. 
Uh, and I want you to know that you are not the only one feeling that way. I talk to veterans all over the country, and that is something that we're all feeling, that we all um, wrestle with, and and that's okay. I think the, the danger becomes when we stop letting others know that we're upset and we start to try to internalize that, that's where we kind of build up the pressure. And so a message I would have for you all that, you know, some moral injury is real. Um, and we're going to talk about some, some spiritual practices that can help relieve some of that moral injury or really address some of that moral injury. One of the things that we want to talk about is how veterans um, across the country take advantage and, and use those benefits that they've earned. We have VA chaplain services across the country. Uh, every state that you're in, we have VA uh, chaplain services. And I want you to feel free to reach out to those chaplains. Chaplains in the VA are much like chaplains in the military. We have one caveat that we will um, we will document lightly in your medical record just to say, hey, we met, we talked. If you have stuff that you want to talk about that you don't want in your medical record, just say, hey, I prefer this not to be in there. We don't need to discuss all the all the particulars, but certainly to let other folks know on the team um, that, that we've talked and, and we've got some concerns or you've got some concerns around some areas, I think is incredibly helpful. So one of the things that chaplains can do, we can sit down and we can talk with you. Um, we can talk about some of the things that have happened on your deployments. We can talk about things that are going on in your life. Uh, we can talk about how your faith informs um, your life in these times and in times of struggle. And we want that to be reality. Uh, that quote that I gave you earlier from Winston Churchill was a quote on his writing uh, from the Malacan Field Force in 1897. Uh, the book was about the frontier wars where they were fighting the Talib in western Pakistan and eastern Afghanistan. And so the, the battle in Afghanistan, the fights in Afghanistan aren't from the last 20 years. We're talking centuries uh, that these fights have been going on. And I want you to know there's there's nothing that you did that was that was wrong about your service, that you served honorably, that you you did everything your country asked you to do. And, and we want to honor that. And as the VA, we want to honor that. As chaplains in our chaplain services, we want to honor that. And we want you to know that we not only appreciate you, but we're here for you today as well. I think one of the things that we look for um, and a call to action, what can we do to to help with things. The easy way, the easiest way to get linked up with the VA chaplain is pick up the phone, call your local chaplain service. If your COVID protocols in your local area allow you to, you can stop by the, the local facility and drop in with your chaplain service. I want you to also think about the community members you have outside the VA. Some folks don't want to set foot inside the VA. Um, I, I admit I, I was that way as well. When I first came out of service, I thought I never want to have anything to do with the VA, uh, but then I became a patient at the VA and I realized in very quick time that I actually liked the VA, that uh, they treat me incredibly well, the care was better than it was out in the local community, and I began to, to have this, this really great feeling that, hey, the VA is here for me and they care about me. Um, not everybody has that. Not everybody has that desire. Not everybody has that experience, but I want you to know that we're here for you. If you don't want to come to the VA, that's completely okay too, right? We've got members in the community. Um, you've got your faith community. You've got clergy members that are there for you that can sit down and talk with you. I think one of the one of the best things that I ever had was a was a conversation with my with my pastor, who I was having um, a pretty big struggle around some some things in combat, and he just looked at me and said, "Matt, you are human." How would you expect to not be affected by this? And that was incredibly freeing to me, but it was also, I took a deep breath and I said, wow, I am human. I should have these feelings. I should have these, these thoughts, these reactions. I should have these. I think in the military, we can look back and we can say, you know, that old, that old adage of, you know, are you broke? Well, machines are broken, but people aren't. Uh, we aren't machines. We, we like to think of ourselves as machines, especially as we're younger and our bodies can do pretty amazing things. As we get older and as I get older, I realize I wasn't the machine that I thought I was. Um, and, it, and if I was, I'm getting kind of worn out and I have to take, take myself offline and work on some things. Um, 
but we're not machines. We have emotions, we have feelings. Uh, we need to be able to share those with one another. And so if you if you don't feel comfortable going to the VA, that's perfectly fine. What about your community members of faith outside the VA? Uh, another resource I want you all to know about is there are vet centers that are quasi attached to the VA. They are a part of the VA, um, but they work much differently. They're on a different setup. And so if you, if you don't want to go to your VA, maybe go to a vet center. I've got a guy that I worked with in service uh, as a chaplain who recently uh, retired. He started working as a readjustment counselor with the vet center. That guy has switched on. He's been deployed and done stuff all over the world. Those are the types of folks that we have at vet centers. Those are also the types of folks that we have at the VA. Other resources I want you to know about, you know, there are a lot of other opportunities that we have within faith communities. Uh, I'm specifically thinking about one, um, re reboot, recovery. Uh, it's a great model. It helps you and your spouse walk through a lot of combat. I've had friends that have really, really benefited from going through a, a cycle and an iteration of that. So there are other things that are out there available for you. I think the biggest thing that I want you to all take away from that is you don't have to do this alone. You're not alone. You're not. I'm here with you. Your fellow veterans are here with you. You're not alone. That might feel like it, but you can reach out to somebody else. We've got social media that you can reach out to folks on. Um, a lot of folks can, can tag back with their friends from their units that they serve with. Reach out start talking i think one of the things that that is most helpful especially when moral injury uh is at work and that feeling of that betrayal is being able to voice that and state that with someone else and if it's people in your unit that, that you are able to do that first with wonderful if it's people like your spouse that you're able to say hey you know what i really feel like this really sucks and that i i feel just absolutely betrayed that our mission wasn't honored Voicing that is is important, and I think it's an honest feeling. It's probably also an accurate feeling, and I think most people around you will know that you feel this way, but you being able to voice it, I think is where you begin to gain some of the power within that, that you're going to take back, you're going to begin to make right. I want to leave you with this. So I, we talked about Winston Churchill a little bit, you know, his, his, church, his quote, that nothing in life is so exhilarating as to be shot out without resolve that that came from his book uh, from the 1897 Malakai Field Force, where he fought the Talib in the frontier wars in, in what is now Western Afghanistan and Eastern Afghanistan. Here's what I want to leave you with. Your experiences this far in your life have prepared you for more. They have made you stronger, more resilient, even in the horrible times. Simply surviving and moving on has helped prepare you and make you more resilient. So your experiences this far in your life have prepared you for more. So it's going to be one of your life's choices. What will you do with what you now know? Will you spend the rest of your life in service to one another? Will you look for ways to serve in your local community? Will you look for ways to get involved in politics? Will you look for ways to help Afghan refugees who have fled their country in Afghanistan, who are now looking to make the United States of America their new home? Will you, will you make that one of your life's choices to help with that? And I think at, at the end, as we look at all these things, as we talk about moral injury, and we stop, talk about spiritual resources and what to do when, when you're struggling now is, what choices will you make now that will affect your future for the good? I want you all to stick around as long as possible. I want you all to have a wonderful, happy life. My goal is that we all make it to 90 plus and we can tell stories from 70 years ago about the hard things that we went through in life and how we began to make adaptations and changes in our lives. We learned from the past. We resolved to not repeat these things. I want you all to have a lot of success. The American people want us veterans to have a lot of success. We want to, to learn from our life. And so again, your experiences thus far in your life have prepared you for more. What are you going to do with that more? If you want to sit on your couch and have a beer and, and relax, and that's what you're going to do with your choices and more, do that. Relax, take a break, just sit in the moment for a little bit, and then now what are we going to do after that? 
I want you all to have a great day. My prayers continue to be with you all. I, I, I routinely ask for God's richest blessings to be upon your lives. And I hope that you know that today, uh, as a veteran, that I support you, that the VA supports you, and that the American people support you. And we want to do the best that we can for you and for a successful life. Thank you all very much, and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.